to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're here in Overdrive because I wanted to cover a couple of articles that really show how this is not limited to one rancher. This is not something that's even necessarily limited to ranchers, it's certainly not limited to that specific ranch. Take a look at this story out of North Carolina. We've got North Carolina fish houses are navigating a variety of issues. This is a story from Journal Now. This is a a family business of fishermen, LT Everett and Sons, that ceased operation December 31st after 67 years in business. Why were they put out of business? Same reason that the ranchers in the Bundy area in Bunkerville were put out of business. Of course, the Bundy family has been there for 140 years. Listen to what happened to these fishermen who, after 67 years in a family business. Estelle Brothers now, who took over from the father, he cited a decrease in product due to state and federal regulations that affect many of the fish that they sold, like sea bass, grouper, flounder, red drum. He said, they cut down the allocations. We just couldn't get enough seafood to keep going. The regulations intended for the protection of fish stocks vary by species and can be very complex. With harvest quotas, size limits, and times of the year, you can fish all being part of the equation. Equation. That was what was happening at the Bundy Ranch. They came in when they started this and saying, we're going to protect these endangered species, the desert tortoise. What they did was they came in and they cut the allocations by 90%. Can you keep your business in, in effect if your business is immediately cut by 90%? If they cut it by the times of year, taking your cattle off of the land at the peak times, and that's what they're doing to these fishermen here. They're cutting it down. And let me explain something to you. When they put these regulations on, they're not just putting out family businesses that have been in business for generations. They're also erecting barriers to make sure that there aren't going to be any new small businesses that are going to be competing with the multinational and international businesses that they're protecting. Listen to this quote here. They say that high fuel prices can make it unprofitable for fishermen to run their boats for smaller harvests. That's right. They have this overhead cost. If you cut down the amount of fish that they can get, they can't do that. And seafood imports compete with seafood caught in the United States. See, in these international waters where they're going in and fishing and then coming back and selling them into the United States or bringing them in with open free trade uh, agreements, quote unquote, that they prefer the international companies, they're putting out the small businessman. They're turning us over to the corporate food uh, production. And this is something that is not going to come back. And if you think it's just about businesses and you don't basically like people who have their own business because maybe, uh, you, you know, you, ex you extrapolate the sins of the giant corporations to the small businessmen in your neighborhood, this is not just about that. This is about your food supply. They're cutting down the fish. They're cutting down the beef. The Bundys were raising beef on open range. That's what you want. You don't want cattle that's corralled and fed these uh, uh, antibiotics and steroids and everything else that they give them in the factory farms. That's the kind of meat that you want to eat if you're going to be eating beef. But they don't want you eating beef. The Southern Poverty Law Center, at the same time that you've got the Mockingbird Press trying to, again, demonize these people as right-wing terrorists, the Southern Poverty Law Center is trying to tell you that Agenda 21 is a right-wing conspiracy. It's not a right-wing conspiracy. It's been mentioned by, as, as Kit Daniels pointed out in this article today, and we had an article that we talked about last night on the Nightly News from the New American. They're pointing out that it's, it's not a right-wing conspiracy. There's been three states where they've introduced anti-Agenda 21 legislation. In Alabama, it passed unanimously, including all of the Democrats there. And one of the best books about Agenda 21 is by Rosa Corey, who's a Democrat. She's a feminist, a lesbian. She's always been a Democrat. But on this issue, she understands what's going on. And we see what's happening here in Texas, the same type of situation. Texas only has one and a half percent of the land controlled uh, by the federal government. And they're trying to increase that now. And I don't have time to talk about it, but if you look at this article, you'll see that the BLM, when they confiscated people's lands, they go back to the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. Glenn Beck criticized Clive and Bundy, laughing at him because he's going back to 1864 when it became a state. They will use those arguments. They are not arcane, and they really do matter. 
and the Enclave Clause. Well, that's all we've got time for today. We'll be back tomorrow. Alex will be back at 11 Central, noon, and we'll have the nightly news tonight at 7. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine.